back at Millen Mountain. Wow, it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's crazy because when we started this project, just following along, this was completely dusty. This was just stuffed in a corner. Yeah. And it was in no shape or form ready for Pikes Peak. Yeah. But now we're here in the tech inspection line. You have the yep. Hunapig in front. You know, it, it has really good company with all these amazing vehicles. And of course your son's race car, just yeah. two vehicles behind. What do you think? What are you feeling now? You know, it it's, brings back so many memories of, of the days and you know, that we started competing here in 1981, I think was the first year. All those memories of, of what, you know, the, the whole procedure, the build up of going through tech and, and getting ready to get up at three o'clock in the morning and making sure we've got our cars are all ready for practice, you know. So, um, you know, a lot of memories. And, you know, this event, it always used to be we would start so early in the morning and it was hard to take a nap during the day because we had stuff to do on the car and, and we had to prepare it for the next day. Come the end of the week, at the end of seven days, we were pretty worn out. And then we had to race. <laughs> so um, um, a lot of those memories coming back. It's a little easier now uh, with, with the not as much practice and qualifying time as we used to have. But um, I'm sure most of the teams are still working all week long there to try and you know, deliver the best they can for their drivers. So you're actually going to practice just one day, is that correct? Or? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one run at the top tomorrow just to make sure that the, the car is running correctly and that the, the engine settings are all correct for that, that altitude. And then um, the following day I'll, I'll do the bottom qualifying section, you know, one or two, three runs, something like that. And then on Friday are you going to do one run all the way up? No, I need to take a rest, you know, because I'm retired now. So, um, you know, <laughs> no, we decided, you know, we've we've prepped this car for this event, but it hasn't had the, the level of preparation that it was used to having, um, nor do we have the spare parts. So, you know, we, we want to run it. We want to be out here still doing this, but we've got to be a little realistic. So we, we've got to limit the, the amount of time that we put on the car. So you won't run the middle section at all until race day? No, I won't run that. Okay, so just top and then bottom for qualifying. That's right. Got yes. it, okay. Yeah. And then, of course, race day, you'll go all the way up. Yeah, race day. Yeah. 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 Incredible. So it, 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 we're basically, um, you know, the engine guys are looking at um, how the motor's performing at these altitudes because it is a different ECU than what we used to race on, you know, back in the 90s. Uh, and just from seeing it being on the chassis dyno the last time I saw it, it actually made pretty close to engine horsepower. Um, because I know Toyota used to dyno it on an engine dyno. Yes. But on a chassis dyno, you know, when you do the math, it was actually pretty close. Yeah, I don't think the fuel is quite the same as what we used to run. Um, and I know that fuel produced a bit more power. So, um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm pretty happy that it's down a little bit. I was quite happy if it was down a whole lot more. I just can't. I, I didn't really understand how difficult it is to drive until I saw that dyno graph where it basically just increases like 600 horsepower within like 200 or 300 RPM. Yeah, it is like that to drive. So you, you've got to have a lot of respect for it, know when it's going to come in and respond accordingly. And as you can imagine, when that was a dirt car, which it was a dirt car, you were always traction limited in every gear. So uh, certainly you know, keep you wide awake and uh, ready to respond to whatever it wanted to do. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see it run. I've never seen it run, so I think uh, it should be good. Can't wait to see it. Too bad. Awesome. Thanks. Oh my God. So we're out here in the middle of the woods with Rod Millen and it's race day and it's very wet, unfortunately, and it's very rainy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's part of what Pikes Peak is all about though, you know, it's, it's not just beautiful sunny weather and, and all of that, it's, you know, we are in the mountains here, so, you know, for the number of years I've been here, we just have to deal with all the different conditions. It yeah, might clear. Yeah, it might, but the crazy thing is, all week it was perfect weather. Even yesterday, it was bone dry yeah. all day. And you know what, Larry, that's happened many a time. 
um, you know, in the dirt days, you know, the, the road would be coming around, getting faster and faster, all the loose stuff was getting cleaned off, it would get better and better, and it would rain overnight and we had to deal with sloppy stuff, you know, so <laughs> it's a part of what Pikes Peak is all about, so, you know, you, you, there was many a time that even after I had the overall record, I'd come back with big improvements to the car and we would go slower so it was all down to the conditions here especially the, the amount of grip that you got on the road uh, just different every year and it's also interesting in that a lot of people don't really understand a lot of people who don't follow Pikes Peak don't understand that you get one run every year one you know chance. if you mess up or something happens or whatever th there's dirt on the road it's better luck till next year pretty much you know you're exactly right you know on top of all that you know uh, for practice sessions are done at from daylight to late 30 in the morning the temperatures are so much cooler than what you typically experience on race day so you know because we race in the middle of the day and you know this year again it's going to be different again as well to practice so it's it's normal for pike speed and on top of that it's actually very rare to be able to practice the whole thing at one time right that's right there's there's two sections that you've never practiced on so you know you've got to be a little careful but at the same time you don't want to give up too much time yeah i mean that one section um you're talking about is glencove passing by that toll booth at triple digit speeds it's got to right. be something else well yeah you, you know there's some bumps in there that um when you were sta starting the second section you didn't experience those so you will experience them this time huh so what do you think it's going to be like hopefully it's not as damp but you have your wets on yeah yeah so you know i hopefully it won't be you know the, the only thing i have found with the pavement here and a couple of times i've done it when it's wet it does drain very well so it's not like you get standing water so you know we we have a groove on our tire that is what it, perhaps i would call an intermediate um i don't think there's not going to be plumes of water or coming off the car so it shouldn't be too bad this whole week you've only had a chance to pretty much do two practice runs on the bottom section i know you tried to run up for a section but something happened to the car yeah we we didn't get the tune right for the the altitude um you know we, we did go to a new fuel because i couldn't i couldn't source the old fuels that we used to run and it was pretty pretty toxic stuff so it's taken a little while to get the tune right on on, on the motor but um, we feel really good about it now how was it running on the bottom section? It was running 90%, so we only did two runs, took it down to the uh, down to the raceway, continued to work on that. Um, I drove it up here yesterday and and I, I felt that the area that where it comes on to boost was really bad before. Um, once it's on boost, it's good, um, but we've cleaned it up, which is definitely gonna help if the road is wet. We're we'll gonna be able to use the torque of that motor to help get it up the hill and and you know apply the power smoothly you know as you saw on the dyno when that that, that little four cylinder motor when it comes on boost and comes into power it's it's like a switch um, so i think we've been able to soften that a little which I, i'm pretty excited about uh, you know the crazy thing to me is when i watched you uh, during practice like your turn in especially into a hairpin is incredible like just the way that thing changes directions is insane and the fact that it's no power steering i mean you're muscling that thing i know it does have oh it does power, have power steering yeah it does have so power that steering. that helps a little bit oh it helps a lot um but i think you know a, a lot you know that's still you know very relevant with that that tacoma is it's still lightweight it's not that heavy it's only just over two thousand pounds and it's got four-wheel drive so a combination of all those things it it does respond well Awesome. Okay. All right. I'll let you go. I know you got to get ready to actually go up. So uh, I'll see you at the start line and good luck. Okay. Thanks, Larry.
countryman. Yes, enjoy yes. the ride, Rod. What do you think? This is it, the legend. Dude, I got goosebumps and I'm not even buying the steering wheel, mate. Can oh, you believe so cool. that we're able to see him Very drive? I mean, Rod just in general was a massive inspiration to me. Like what his legacy and the fact like 100 years to have him back. He's a proper global legend, but Kiwi legend. Yeah, Kiwi legend, but honestly, like so many people were inspired to come here because of him. Yeah. You know? Which, which, I was just intrigued to see which he was going to bring, whether the Tacoma or the Celica, because the Celica still hauls ass. He's been ripping the Celica at all the Leadfoot festivals yeah. um, back at Rod's place in Hahe in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see Rod rip up here in the, in the beast. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I uh, can't wait to see you come here next year. Next year, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to it. Dude, building bring, a pretty wild car, but it's quite good to learn. I've also just learned today that there's an exhibition class. So the car we're building is rear wheel drive, and because it uh, comes factory as a front wheel drive with rear wheel drive conversion, as soon as we've done that, that throws us into unlimited. But then this morning I noticed it's exhibition, and then there used to be actually a drift class here, obviously with Reese and Goosh, Die, like a lot of guys that have run that class, which is great for the sport because it showcases just how freaking fast yeah. drift cars are. Because a lot of people watch drifting, they're like, oh yeah, you, they just got heaps of horsepower and no grip. But I mean, Reese, I think he set the record here one year when the Hyundai and like full drift specs. So, I don't know, it's just cool I, I, just to be a fan myself, just to be here as a spectator, you know, so to be cool. at Pikes Peak. So cool. Um, it's hard to believe that I'll be racing next yeah. year, but I can't freaking wait. I can't, I can't wait to hear the rotary. Yeah, it'll be like, you'll probably, you'll hear me at the top, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. At least the team know. <laughs> All right, he's about to take off, so we're going to check that out. Thanks, bud. Go. Yo. Just one minute, just one minute, one minute. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, no, okay. One minute. <laughs> okay. All right, so there you go. What do you think? Well, you know, I think by by not qualifying really well, I got I definitely got a better road. Um, so that was that was an advantage for me against against the front running guys. Um, but then up top, by not practicing the top two sections, um, I knew where the road was, but now the fog I couldn't see. And 
I just said, you know what, it's been pretty fun up to here. I think I'll just go slowly here to the finish and it was still okay. You know, yeah. so, so, you know, car ran good and um, um, yeah, we had a fun week. Yeah, the point is that you finish. The point is that the people that never got a chance to see it run, saw it run. Yeah. And also you put down a pretty good time. Yeah, you know, actually it's still a powerful car, you know, and when it comes on to boost, my eyes go so big, you know, and I have to pull another gear. And <laughs> so it, um, it's certainly, I have a, a lot of respect for what that, the capabilities of that car. I think if Reese was driving it, he would do really, really well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this project. I know everybody, so many people came up to me over this week saying, you know, they love watching the mini series, yeah. you know, so this is a good way to close it out. Yeah. No, th thank you for following us. And then, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and all the fans that have come out to Pikes Peak, the number of people that have come up and, and, and made themselves known and remember the old days, very special. Amazing. All right, cool. See you guys in the next video.